Yellow, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Paragon Guide. I am Sylphen, and in this video, we are taking a beginner's approach to Rampage. We are going to talk about and hopefully discover and learn about his skills, abilities, and starter deck. So, ladies and gentlemen, Rampage is best suited as a tank. Now, I say that because in this situation, we are a tank in this team, and we need to build for it. So simply open your select a deck screen, go to starter deck, tank physical damage, hit confirm, and make sure that you toggle off suggestions up here in the top left hand side of the screen. Now we have to make sh sure of something. Rampage can be a jungler and he can also be a tank. Um, or simply a tank that can also be a jungler. So we have to see who is taking a Harvester key, and this Grux is, so that enables us to not do that and relegate the jungle to Grux. We're gonna start off with a Health Potion, a Mana Potion, and a Scout Sword as a nice, solid foundation for the beginning of the game. Now, as a tank, I would suggest that you try your best to go here in the mid lane. That enables you to, in the early game here, best rotate either left or right lane to anybody that really needs your help. Uh, ganking, being kind of quick and maneuverable in the beginning of the game, trying to get kills on the enemy team is going to be very important, so you need to make sure that you do exactly that. Also, focusing here on last hitting is going to absolutely amplify your card power that you get in the early part of this game. When you last hit, you get you get uh, three three times as much card power um, than if you otherwise didn't last hit. So it simply is more efficient, more effective to do that. So the very first ability that we're going for here is something that's going to enable us to gank enemy heroes. We're going with his Q ability, and that is a stun. You pick up a boulder, hurl it at the enemy, and if you are accurate enough, you can stun them in place and hopefully secure a kill. So that is why we're going for this Q here trying to secure a kill on the enemy team. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking across the map, who is low health, who can I maybe go over and and secure a kill. Um, trying to pay attention to that left lane, there is two enemy, two friendly teams members there, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm there when I need to. So there's that Grux, he's going back on in the left lane there. So we could very much go over there and help him. He's trying to really be a determining force for your team, trying to trying to dictate who dies and who lives. So look at here at the rubble of this enemy Grux here. I was able to rotate this way make sure that my Q, my stun, lands on him, stuns him in place, so this howitzer and I could take him out. The second ability we are going for is, is E, King of the Jungle. Gain 4.48 health regen plus an additional 4.2 while in the jungle. That is going to give us that sustain that we want here and hopefully keep us alive. So here's a sparrow. She she was actually ganked by this Grux that did a good job here um, securing that kill. So I'm going to pick up my boulder here. Oh, very close here. I picked it up, and um, once you pick it up, you are slowed down considerably, so it's best to simply let it fly. So our left lane is now uh, in a little bit of trouble. I can go over there and see if I can do anything but no. So our friendly team is going back, so we're simply going to have to go back here and defend against this Murdoch. So let's see if I can land this. I do. Let's see if um, I can harass him a little bit. Now the second most important part of being a tank is trying to body block. So getting behind the enemy and body blocking him so that he can't go where he wants to. There you see we get the last hit. Definitely doing an 
pretty good job there securing that kill and we do that is how you get an advantage here in the early game as a as a tank as a jungler rotating and securing those kills with six power and almost level five we are going to get back and spend our first card power so we used a scout's ward earlier on i didn't explain it simply because i'm going to explain what uh, the upgraded version of the Scout's Ward is going to be. That is the Lord's Ward. That's going to be our first card. Replace the Scout's Ward with a Lord's Ward and use your next three card power to get this Amulet of the Veteran. Now, we are a tank in this game, but why are we getting some physical damage health card with all damage? I will simply explain once we get to the middle of the map. So here is a team fight that I noticed was started happening. We need to make sure that we are a part of that. There is that Severog running away. I'm an old, very nice snipe, but we do actually have this Murdoch here. Uh, let's see if I can get a stun. I do get the stun on him. Hopefully this enables my, my team here to come in. Oh, but I wasn't able to get the good enough body blocks so that my team can come and secure the kill. So there we go. Now that we have the 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 um, Lord's Ward, we're able to put down a Shadow Ward here that you can see goes invisible when it is deployed. What this enables us to do is to look at the enemy's Shadow Wards and take them out. Now they don't have vision. A very nice pull by the Grex kills our, our Sparrow. What that vision does is absolutely astronomically important as a tank giving your team vision so that you can sa effectively save your team members from death is very very important now it looks like the enemy team is rotating around but that is okay the last ability we're going here for is going to be our ultimate it is incredibly powerful especially here in the here in the uh, in the late game, uh, in the beginning of the game, not so much, simply because you get you get not that much health regen, which is the primary function of the uh, ability. So it looks like we were a little bit too aggressive here. I don't have my leap to get away, and that was my bad. A little too aggressive. A great pull by that Rex. Not something you want to do here in the early game, ladies and gentlemen. So if you didn't notice, what your ultimate does is it gives you a very good amount of health regen. Now here at level 1, the ultimate only gives you 50 health regen. And as you can see there, three of the enemy team attacking me was able to fairly easily take me down. In the late game, that, that um, health regen is increased severely. To, I, I believe at level 3 is somewhere around 275. It is much, much stronger in the in the late game, so simply don't try to be a little bit too aggressive like I was. As for, as for skill upgrade priority, I simply did a misclick there. I upgraded my right click first before anything else. I would simply try to use Try to upgrade our E as much as possible, followed by our Q, and then our right click. What that does is the E gives us that sustain, that increased health regeneration, and simply makes us a better tank. So I rotated mid lane just to give a little bit of pressure here, but it looks like I am needed in the left lane. As a tank, you are best suited to be with your team. Okay, let's go in here, ladies and gentlemen. Try to try to. So let's let's actually do this. I'm gonna use my ultimate here. And where is my ultimate? Definitely did not mean to do that. I used my ultimate way too late. I pressed my the right the R key, but it simply didn't go. That was a again misplay on my part. Four card power going to go right into this amulet of the veteran. Now we're going to explain why we're going for damage here in the early game. That damage as all of the characters here in this early game aren't doing as much damage as they will later on um, relatively speaking of course. 
now is the best time to build damage. It's going to help us, A, obviously kill enemy heroes faster and be a little bit more relevant in these engagements. It's going to make us very, very easily take down lane minions and get those last hits, which is really going to start our snowball effect here with our card power. And it's simply also, with because it's the Amulet of the Veteran, fully upgraded bonus of 200, 200 uh, card health is going to actually be very effective here. So I'm going to try to... There, there I did save that... Um, I did save our Grex there by stunning that enemy Grex. So we need to try to keep our teammates alive. I'm going to take out this Scout Sword here, just so they don't have as good a vision as possible. As you can see, I'm trying to stay with my teammates, trying to be as effective as I can. What, since you are best, best used as a flanking, coming, coming out from the side, uh, being, using the element of surprise and the, el the element of uh, numbers to your advantage. We want to try to always engage from the side. So right now I'm going up here and doing a little bit of jungling. With that increased health regen in the jungle, Rampage can definitely be a good jungler. Looks like our Murdoch was caught out, but hopefully he does a fantastic job and annihilates that Pua, so he does not need us to. So one gameplay tidbit, you can see that there are two of the enemy there are just sitting in their base, not really doing very much. They should have actually gone and get their white camps in their jungle. You don't want to be sitting idly by and waiting for an engagement to happen. So right now I could very much go and get this white camp over here, but I'm feeling like this sparrow could really get picked off by the enemy team here, especially by that Grex. Always thinking as much as you, as possible, how can you be a better team player? Look at that boulder throw right over there, getting that Murdoch. So here is an example, ladies and gentlemen, where we use our ultimate. Oh, but look at that. Very much lagging there. Sorry about that. Uh, there was an example of me not saving that Grex. Almost did but not quite using my ultimate to al also give us instant boulder throw and increased pounce range. I use that increased pounce range to simply get away. Um, our team look, looks like here definitely needs some help here trying to defend this, but this Grux could do very easily to actually pull us out here and maybe get the hits. We do have six card power, need to be very careful here. Let's go back now that this is defended and spend these six cards. So here we go, able to fully complete this. Why that 300 health is going to be big, big here on the kind of early games, no more now the mid game. And now we go into our next cards. So now we need to focus on our resistances. How can we reduce the damage that's incoming to us? So you have to take a look at the enemy team. What kind of damage do they deal? Physical damage, energy, physical, energy, energy. So we have the two tanks here going for looks like a a looks like a tank looks like a, a utility focus there so they are out of the equation somewhat and we have two energy damage and one physical so we have to start with a energy resistance card so we have these two tune barriers that do do that but they are upgraded differently this one has more health and this one has more energy armor we want the one with more energy armor simply equip, equip it and we're going to start here with these energy barriers next so here we are trying to make something happen here in the right lane, but that howitzer gets picked off, and he is certainly dead. I'm just going to walk right through here and um, 
I wanted to come in from behind, try to make something happen, but didn't really think I could. Um, I gotta be careful here. One tip that you should always do here is stand in front of your tower, forcing the enemy ranged heroes to actually hit you instead of the tower. Once they hit you, that fo that forces the tower to actually attack um, attack you. So I'm gonna leap here and try to deal damage to this to this um, Grux here. As you can see, our health regen is starting to get better here, um, but looks like we do get a nice pick off, and they will kill me for sure. Yeah, there we go. Um, no, really not much I could do, 3v, uh, three, uh, 1v3 there, just trying to do my best and defend the tower. My team did not respond very well, but hopefully this Rex will just kill the tower, not quite. Oh, but there it is. So we do get a tower out of that, and my death is not in there. Six card power, ladies and gentlemen, by being able to simply stay with my team and make some kills happen with my stun and being a big presence in these team fights. Now we really need that barrier for that upgrades here. Actually going to, with these six card power here, going to get a greater health and a barrier, simply wanting to use as much of this card power as Enemy possible. Let's go back uh, in the map here. Now that we have a level two of our ultimate we are going to start being a little bit more of a presence here in these team fights. I can be a little bit more aggressive, really throw myself in there, trying to, you know, start these engagements, saying now is when we are fighting, and let's t kill this player with our Q. So here, let's try to see a showcase here of our ultimate. Let's see if I can do anything against this. I think there's going to be too much damage here for me to handle, but if I don't get help with this Murdoch here, yeah, and I do actually get some help here, so there's a very nice um, ultimate there. Let's see, oh, I'm being a little bit too aggressive. Oh, and I missed there, so looks like I have to retreat. 60, 76 health. I don't think I will survive. There we go. Too aggressive, that Murdoch didn't follow me um, enough. Again, trying to, you know, make things happen. Didn't quite work there, but hopefully it does for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need to be a little bit adaptable here for this match. That Grox is doing a lot of damage to being a very key uh, member of the enemy team. We need to take just a little bit of the edge off of him. 22 physical armor and that 100 health will certainly help. Doing a little bit of a balanced approach is okay. So ladies and gentlemen, we were the engaging force here in this team fight. I really engaged hard, really made sure to, to stun that Severog right when he was overextended in the, in the team fight, enabling my team to take him out and start that roll forward. Very good engagement there. Able to activate the orb prime, hopefully go right to the inhib. Take the inhib. At that point, we should secure a massive lead here in this game. Really going to do a good job. I'm gonna finish off this card with that. Get the two guards here. Now our build is really, really powerful here. Going to be able to absolutely be a very good tank for our team at this point. Also, make sure that you are upgrading your ultimate as much as possible. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that already, but make sure that you always upgrade your, your inhibitor as much as possible. Four card power, ladies and gentlemen, going down the right lane, staying with my team, trying to be a good tank for them. Able to get this greater guard, we are finally have the tankiness that we need we got even more coming here with these next cards here going to go next for this tune barrier increase our tankiness here in these team fights that pendulum of lords is a good card uh, the more that you are able to use your abilities because of that cooldown reduction that you get from it the stronger you'll be able to use your stun on your q much 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 more often and also your ultimate much more often will be very very strong 
And there is victory, ladies and gentlemen. So simply really trying to be a really strong presence in the engagements, always trying to be in the front lines, trying to absorb the damage from, from the enemy team, trying to mitigate the damage being done to your team. We did do a pretty poor job here, ladies and gentlemen, of getting card power. It's fairly difficult as a tank, I find, to get those last hits, to get that really good card power. Um, we did die a little too often, ladies and gentlemen. I personally, not the best tank, but this is simply the way to go for this starter build. So let's go over the build, ladies and gentlemen. The very first cards you are going to get are these health potion, a mana potion, and depending on if you are the jungler or if you are the tank, the harvester key or the scout's ward. Please go and look up a, another guide of mine on how to be a jungler because that is quite complicated in itself. If you are not the jungler, you upgrade your scout's ward with this lord's ward, and if you are in fact, the jungler, the jungler, then you replace your harvester key with a lord's key. After this, you don't upgrade it. You go straight into the amulet of the veteran for that 100 health, all of the, all of the damage upgrades, and that 200 health upgrade bonus. That 100 health and 200 health fully upgraded bonus is going to be a big upgrade in the early game, and that's why you need it then. That damage enables you to get those last hits, be a little bit more effective, quite a bit more effective in team fights in the early game, when people aren't doing necessarily as much damage as they will, relatively speaking, in the middle and late game. That's why that is so important. Always upgrade damage in the early game if you have, if you are going to do any of it. Next, you start right away into your resistances. Analyze the enemy team. If it's mostly one type, go for that type. Always upgrade first the, the one with the most resistance. So either this tune barrier with the two two-point barrier upgrades or this tempered plate with the two two-point guard upgrades. Then go into the other type and then back again. And then at that point, once you have two of one type and one of the other type, you certainly can go to the Pension of Lords for your next card after that. So that will be um, all of the cards here. The Lord's Ward or the Lord's Key. Two, the Amulet of the Veteran. Three, for the main, si main source of damage from the enemy team. Four, for the off type. Five, for the for again going back to the main source of damage from the enemy team. And then six, onto the Pendulum of Lords. This gives you very important greater health going to be really helpful in the late game obviously that a chrono able to use your stun and especially your ultimate and your leap much much more your mana is going to be very important because you're going to be able to stay in these engagements much longer because you have all those resistances and that health very important in case i didn't explain his right click <laughs> It's his leap. You leap into the air, and it's a very good hard engage or disengage tool. Um, if you use your ultimate, you get an even greater. It's, in, it's an insane leap distance. Again, easy to disengage from as well. There you guys have it. There is the guide. Please let me know down in the comments if you found this useful. Please like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it, leave a comment down below, like I said. Please share it with the community and of course subscribe. If you found this guide helpful or simply enjoyed the video, I want to do it again for you in the future, so please go ahead and subscribe. Social media up on the next screen. Until next time, like always, take care.